I think the Darwin Award for the millennia goes to the South Koreans. There's a story out recently that shows no matter how bad something is, capitalism can't make it worse. So there's this um, disease going around. You might have heard of it. It's highly, highly communicable. And you can transmit it to people not showing any symptoms yourself. You might have heard about it. It's been in the news. So, believe it or not, guess what? The Koreans, South Koreans, have decided to do as a response. Even though literally the entire world is saying, avoid large gatherings of public whatever because of the communicability of this disease, a store in South Korea offered this wonderful, amazing sale on masks to avoid getting it. So then thousands and thousands of South Koreans all gathered in this huge line to buy the masks to keep from getting this. What could possibly go wrong? I mean, by all means, whatever you do, don't have socialism get involved and have the government mail them out. Or, you see this drone taking the picture? Whatever you do, don't have the drone deliver the masks to the people so they can stay home. Let's bring everybody out and have them gather. So if there is somebody out there who is sick, they'll be able to transmit it to the maximum amount of people possible so that this store can make a nice, tidy profit. Genius. Absolute genius. You know, some people ask me, they say, you know, you don't ever offer any solutions. I actually have a great one. And it doesn't necessarily deal with this, but here we are in year four, and guys, there's not going to be a wall. I hope you guys have accepted that. But there is a fix. There really is a fix, and it makes winners of everyone of this issue at the border. We've talked about the drugs and the criminality coming across. I did another video um, dealing with another aspect of it. There's a great way, an absolute great way, to not only control the spread of this thing going around, you could also control the um, undocumented people coming in. You could provide massive amount of jobs for Americans. And you would not have to build a wall. And you could use a situation that already exists. You see, this area down here is called the, it's the commercial zone. And there are specific rules that apply here that don't apply inland. One of the big problems that we have in this country are the trucks coming in that don't get inspected. U.S. truckers are losing all sorts of revenue because of this. Now, stick with me. Also cars, but my solution would be this. No Mexican truck enters this country and no U.S. truck enters Mexico. We create these staging areas where they just drop the trailers and leave. The trailers are then inspected, Mexican trailers coming in from Mexico. The goods are offloaded out of those trailers, never having set one tire inside our country. And then they are shuttled to American trailers, ones that have been inspected, ones we know are safe, ones we know that don't have contraband. And then American truckers pick them up and then deliver them in the United States and the exact converse thing happens going south. So that only American truckers are hauling American trailers with inspected goods. Now, you're going to need a lot of people to do that in that zone. Creating all sorts of jobs. And yeah, will it add some cost? It sure will. But on par 
I think it's a better idea to keep our stuff here and their stuff there. Now, here's another idea. Remember this picture I just showed about the cars? No cars from Mexico enter this country. If you want to come to our country from Mexico, you have to park. Remember these, these staging areas I'm talking about? These big, giant parking lots, basically? You have to leave your car, your Mexican car, here. And you have to rent a car from an authorized car rental agency to come into our country. And that's the only car you're allowed to be in. Period. You're caught in any other kind of car, you're out. And, you know, you use your car, whatever it is, as collateral. Same thing going the other way. No U.S. cars are allowed to go into Mexico. If you, we basically need to control the actual vehicles that are crossing our border and create a zone on that border where every trailer is an American trailer going north. Every trailer going south is a Mexican trailer going south. They can bring the goods in Mexican trailers up here. That's fine. We unload them. We'll have a whole bunch of empty trailers. American goods going south can go in those trailers and Mexican truck drivers can come pick them up and take them where they got to go. Same thing with cars. No American cars go down. No Mexican cars go, go up. And yeah, that's going to require a lot of people, but the car rental agencies would love it. The American trucking companies would love it. And you would be amazed how much would get shut down. We'd have to order a whole bunch more agents. We would have to to build a wall. For those of you still stuck on the wall, there are areas down here where you would have to first build infrastructure, roads, and all sorts of different things just to begin to think about building this wall. It would take years and years and years and, I mean, huge armies of men and equipment out here. So the money was already going to be spent anyway. Why not, instead of a wall of brick or steel, how about a wall of people? A wall of people that are working, earning a living, doing something good for our country. And the best part is, you could make it a branch, a yet another branch of our military. We just have a space force, right? They've taken people from all around the military to create this space force. This could be a version of the Coast Guard, just a land version of it. And you could make as an incentive all of those people, just like us veterans, exempt from Obamacare. A lot of people don't realize that. That if you have VA health care, you're not required under law to sign up for Obamacare. I think you'd have a lot of people signing up. You'd have this little two to three mile zone where there would be a lot of shuttle drivers, shuttle truck drivers. And like I said, the trailers would never move. They would be offloaded, skid at a time. You'd have fork truck drivers. You'd have inspectors. You'd have the guys shuttling the stuff to the American trailers. You'd have the loaders. And then all of the attending different things, just like when a military base is built in our country, all sorts of businesses sprout up around it. And it creates this big economic engine that was so terrible what happened in the 90s when, when Clinton decided to constrict the military. He hurt a lot of civilian areas. A lot of little cities dried up, especially in California. We could go back to that. We could create a lot more of these bases, and they wouldn't be all, you know, military, classic military like we see them, but they would be federalized. And we could fix this problem just by investing in people, not in bricks. And, you know, there would have to be, to some extent, some type of line delineating, you know, where Mexican trucks stopped and where 
American trucks stopped. And so there would have to be fences and gates guarded by people. So you would get your way in some extent, but there wouldn't be this 25 foot tall, you know, 50 foot wide wall with a trench in the middle and, you know, and gun emplacements on the top. It'd just be ridiculous. Turn it into a economic enterprise and invite businesses in to make it worthwhile for everyone. You know, you would need people on the Mexican side doing the same thing. Get with the government of Mexico and have them do the same thing on their side to create their jobs. It's a win for everybody. They get the job. They won't have to come here illegally to get the jobs because the jobs will be right there at the border. And we won't have, and look, it's not perfect. I understand that, but it's a solution. People say, you know, you're not talking about answers. Here's one. You'd have to hammer out some kinks, I'm sure. But I think it would work. I think it would work fantastically. Especially for the people coming, you know, from Central America and through Mexico that want to look for work. They get right to the border and there'll be all sorts of work. Who do you think is going to wash all those rental cars? Who do you think is going to wash all those trailers? And take care of all of the attending little businesses that you would need to support, you know, basically an army that size of people from the Gulf all the way over to California. There would be all sorts of work on both, both sides of the border. So anyway, I'm just going to leave that there. That's my idea. Um, would definitely like to hear your opinion on it. Like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time.